Smartcast. Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. And on the line with us today, we have Roland Zemani. We'll be discussing his fantastic book, Sermons with Insight. And I will say, Roland was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best movers in the business, Authors Press Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, you already know, you got to move it through Authors Press. You can find them at AuthorsPress.com. Now, I'm very much looking forward to this. I know you guys are as well. And listen, Roland is the expert, okay? He's written the book. He's done the research. He's going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could. So without further ado, let's bring him here on the line with us. Roland, first and foremost, thank you so much for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. How are you? Well, I'm doing fine, and I'm honored to be part of this kind of an interview. It doesn't happen to be all the time to overstate the case, uh, but I'm I'm ready to go with whatever you've got to offer to me. I appreciate the words, Roland. You're too kind. Listen, the honor is all ours, okay? We're always looking for new authors with really a fresh perspective on things, and you are undoubtedly a person of distinction. So we are very much looking forward to this and really receiving all of the knowledge that you're going to be able to give to our listening audience. Now, Roland, I know we have so much to discuss, but before we jump into the book, let's hold off slightly. Start by telling our listening audience a little bit more about yourself, please. Well, what's interesting about myself in connection with a a book of sermons is that I haven't always been a clergyman. Uh, For 14 years, I was working in business and government in the New York City uh, metropolitan area, uh, dealing with organization and procedural problems with personnel issues. Uh, uh, But but then I I, I made a, a huge career change and went to Union Theological Seminary in New York, uh, then down to Duke uh, for a PhD in religion. Uh, In order to get the PhD, I spent a year in Germany with a a, a theologian there, uh, and uh, then, well, then became a professor of philosophy and religion at Blackburn College in Carlinville, Illinois. So uh, there was those kinds of uh, educational steps that I took uh, and ways of of thinking about things from an educational point of view before I finally ended up being uh, a Lutheran minister for uh, 50, uh, for for actually only five years as a a practicing uh, Lutheran minister. Although now that I'm retired, I do a lot of what they call pulpit supply, uh, substituting for uh, uh, pastors that are uh, on vacation or not not working for this the same church. My perspective could be seen to be different from a lot of uh, uh, those who who prepare sermons. Although the education that I was immersed in. I, I think pretty much has me on target in terms of uh, what Christianity teaches and uh, what the insights uh, could be from what you read in the Bible. Absolutely. Now, Roland, curiosity for myself. I mean, you've articulated to us, of course, you're not, you're a practicing clergyman now, but that wasn't your background. And it seems as, of course, as you stated, you were teaching philosophy for a number of years. So it seems that this has maybe always been an interest of yours, but what sparked that switch to actually become a clergyman? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, okay. Uh, you know, it, it, it was something like this. I, I, was, I was actually, you know, uh, a professor and, uh, you know, a teacher of uh, religion courses and philosophy courses, and the college I was working at uh, was a small one in central Illinois. I got to the point where it was almost going to have to close down, 
And so they, they said anyone who wasn't offering a major, they wouldn't, weren't going to be able to, to keep on their staff. Well, I was teaching something like eight different courses in, in the different fields of philosophy and, and religion, New Testament, Old Testament, you know, all that kind of thing. But because of that, I didn't have a major. Uh, and so it's at that point, when it looked as though I was going to have to leave Blackburn College, I said, all right, let's see how what I know from an intellectual point of view would apply to a local congregation. And really only then did I get ordained uh, as a, a Lutheran minister. Hmm. Roland, without further ado, Sermons with Insight. Tell us a little bit about your book. It's really a collection of, uh, I think, 35 or 40 sermons that I did during the uh, five years I was a clergyman. Uh, and these were the ones I considered to be the best ones that, that was that were most insightful, that were easiest to understand. Um, and it was just a matter of uh, pull, pulling them together, organizing them by uh, different periods of the church year, uh, and or also by different kinds of topics. Um, so for clergymen or people in general who want to uh, find something that might be said during um, Christmas or Easter or uh, Transfiguration Sunday or Pentecost or you know, all of all of these church year kinds of things. Mm-hmm. You can find that in the book. And then, as I said, there, there are a num- number of other topics, uh, too. And as a matter of fact, I, I put an appendix onto the book called Who Wrote the Bible, um, which is... Uh, eight pages of explaining in layman's terms what uh, most scholars say about how the Bible came to be. Um, And people have commented favorably on that as an explanation that they uh, hadn't been aware of in the past. Mm -hmm. Roland, getting back into inspiration, what did you see in your practice that made you feel compelled to take these sermons, put them into a collection in a book, and actually put it out for the public to be able to partake in as well? Well, I thought a lot of them contained, uh, what I say in the title, contained insights that the average person isn't aware of when they're dealing with uh, scriptural passages, Uh, explanations of why stories about Jesus develop, how they apply to us nowadays, um, how I can get a, a congregation involved in, in doing the kinds of things that, that Jesus had been uh, teaching, understanding that religious language is usually metaphorical and should not be taken literally. Uh, explanations of the doctrine of the Trinity. Um, Often enough, it's it's useful to deal with a biblical passage and point out what it is not saying, um, because often people read into uh, biblical writings, uh, things that really aren't there, but that that seem to make sense to the reader at the time they're they're reading it. why the disciples followed Jesus, you know, they didn't have to. Uh, mm-hmm. why, why they thought he was such a great guy. Uh, the notion of being born again, which is uh, uh, important if you're taking uh, your religion and your, and your relationship to God uh, seriously, I'd say. <laughs> so, you know, what, what I thought was, um, I've got appropriate things to say about these topics and I was able to gather uh, enough sermons together to make it worth putting them in a book Mm -hmm. guys again here on the line with Roland Zemani we're discussing his fantastic book sermons with insight 
You know, and Roland, what a great segue you've established because, of course, you're talking about the sermons that you've been able to find and put together that you believe are very insightful, right? That address a number of different topics, but would be very beneficial for the public at large. Now, Roland, talk to us about the the research that you did in developing this book. Now, of course, with your background in teaching and in philosophy, I'm sure a lot of the knowledge at a certain point became by rote, right? I mean, it became things that you already knew just from being in practicing this for so long. But what what research specifically did you do in preparation for this book? Yeah, it wasn't a matter of me doing research for for the sermons. I mean, what what, what you've got to see in my background is having classes at seminaries, uh, you know, a whole semester devoted to what is called the Old Testament, and a whole semester devoted to the New Testament, and, and lots of uh, uh, lots of other courses that are taught at seminaries, and then zeroed into more specific, more in more detail at the, the PhD level, which were in my background at the time I was needing to come up with a sermon for a particular Sunday. So you know, I, I don't get credit, or I, it, it is appropriate to talk about research prior to the sermon usually, um, other than I might want to check a notebook I had from a particular class to see uh, you know, some, some specific thing that, that I could put into the sermon. Now, talk to our listening audience. I, I mean, as we start to finalize this interview, the information that you've given thus far is fantastic. Now, what are you hoping to see people do or take from this book? Well, if you tend to be a religious literalist, uh, tend to take the words of the, the Bible sort of just you know, in, in a liberal, liberal fashion, I hope that will loosen you up, uh, move you away from that position. Um, and then whether or not you fall in that category, um, Getting some ideas about uh, things that the Bible talks about that you hadn't thought of before just because you know, most people don't spend their time uh, thinking about biblical passages. Um, you know, the sermons pre- present those kinds of things. They sometimes focus on getting congregations involved in making the world better in, in one way or another in their community or elsewhere. Um, So that's what I was, I was, you know, I thought there were enough different kinds of sermons that I've had that deal with those kinds of issues that people uh, need to be confronted with, uh, courage to deal with, that I, uh, again, after, after five years of doing this preaching and, and having kept using my notes and sometimes complete written out sermons every Sunday, I had a lot to go through and, and could pull out what I thought were the best. And uh, I, I still think uh, they're quite worth looking at. I'd love to hear one of the sermons. If you have one, again, readily available that you can read to our listening audience, I think that would be a fantastic way to close us out. In our gospel reading today, we have a lesson on intolerance. Tolerance toward all groups that are not identical with an organized church and its traditional teachings. Jesus said in Mark 9, 40, whoever is not against us is for us. This is consistent with the usual disposition disposition of Jesus to break down social barriers and to be inclusive. That's because the others are not part of our group doesn't mean they're not doing good. If they're not standing in our way, they're not hurting our cause. Indeed, it can be said that they are even fostering our cause because they are making it possible for us, as disciples of Christ, to do what we are called to do. Mm. At luncheon recently, I was eating with two faculty couples, all four members of whom have lived extensively overseas. And they were struck by how intolerant religions can be. Much of the suffering in the history of the world has been caused by religious conflicts 
from Muslims, uh, Muslim conquest at the beginning of their history to the Crusades, to the Thirty Years' War, to conflicts in India, to the conflict of Northern Ireland, to Bosnia, to the creation of refugees in Sudan, much of the motivation of uh, Al-Qaeda today. Now, I wouldn't want to call the exploits of Genghis Khan or any of the wars the United States has participated in religious wars. There is no denying the reality of religious intolerance. Since all religions endorse respect for fellow human beings, there would seem to be no excuse for it. Roland, thank you so much for sharing. And listen, I love the fact that that is the one you specifically chose to read because it applies on so many levels. Guys, listen, we're talking about these things with regards to religion. What I love so much about that sermon that he just found is it leaps past the borders of religion. Of course, that is the main intent and reason why he put it in the book. But guys, whether you're a believer, an atheist, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, when we're talking about tolerance, when we're talking about acceptance, that is something that we are constantly faced with in our day-to-day lives. You have you don't have to look any further than what is currently going on right now. Israel and Palestine. People going after each other, people being in conflict for no other reason than just the well, <laughs> let me I'm making a very simplistic version. Of course, there's a lot of other reasons, but They're utilizing and they're in conflict and so many innocent people are dying. When we look at the previous administration and how there was just an all out warfare, it seemed, against certain people, certain communities, Muslims, Mexicans. Guys, you look throughout history. This is something that we are faced with again and again. And I love that sermon because it really it hits home right and and i'm gonna butcher the line so it's of course it's not a direct quote but essentially whoever is not against you is really for you right or something akin to that in what roland just read that is so beautiful that is so powerful that is so impactful and that really gets to the heart in my opinion of such value that is within the confines of this book because it goes past the borders of religion. You know, last question, Roland, as we tie up this fantastic interview, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't expecting prior to embarking upon the journey. In a certain sense, I was surprised that I kept finding uh, enough sermons that I thought were really very good. You know, over, over five years of, um, we want to say, 50 sermons per year or uh, close to that, um, a preacher doesn't do a perfect job every time, but I, I, I did come across enough of these sermons that I thought were worthwhile that I uh, you know, I, I, I took the steps of, of putting to, them together in the book. Um, I don't know whether that's answered your question adequately, but it's what <laughs> what comes to mind <laughs> at this point. Absolutely. Now that, that that's more than adequate, Roland. Thank you so much for sharing, guys. Listen, what more can be said? I can be here on the line. I could talk to Roland for hours. I mean, this is something that genuinely interests me and this is something that i think again has so much value in and for that reason alone it needs to be on everybody's shelf i mean you need to pick up your copy of sermons with insight by roland zamani you surely will not be disappointed guys this is something that we love to discuss here at people of distinction we are constantly focusing on our human family And how we grow and develop. And a lot of times, the main solution that we come to is through love, is through unity. And I know it sounds like a cliche, but it is so true. Through love, through acceptance, through unity. Guys, we can can move mountains. We can break barriers. 
In this book, Sermons with Insight, really going off of the sermon that Roland read, again, there's an underlying message and an underlying theme that he was wanting to put out by comprising these sermons in his book. But what is so beautiful is that it can be applied to so many other things. And at the end of the day, through that education, we will grow, we will develop. And we'll start to chip away at that that wall in front of us. Roland, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you once again for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. Well, thank you for inviting me to participate.